Hi, my name's Paul Ashmore, and I am the lead mixing and mastering engineer here in Studio B. Now, I thought I'd give you a quick studio tour, show you around what is in Studio B, and go through the equipment that I use. Up front, you'll find behind me the PMC CI140 speakers. Now, this is a Dolby Atmos 9.1.4 system. We have across the front, five CI-140s, which do our LCR and our wides. Either side of the center speaker, we have the CI-140 subs. So they are two subs that are either side of that center speaker. Around the room, we have CI-60s, and on the ceiling, we have CI-30s. Next, behind me, you can see the Avid S4 console. That is a control surface that controls every aspect of Pro Tools, makes my workflow a lot faster, and to be honest, it's a blessing to have. Now, the more interesting stuff, we have the equipment that's in here. Now, this in this room, I have 104 analog channel strips. 88 of those channel strips are taken up on the DSPs. So down here, out of shot, I have five McDSP APB16s, and over here I have an APB8, which makes 88 channels of analog processing. Now, if you don't know what a McDSP is, it's the APB box. Now, this is an analog processing box. And what it is, is digitally controlled plugins that route through analog pieces of equipment. Now, the plugin aspect of it is just for control of the hardware. So you don't have any knobs or buttons on the actual hardware. All the hardware is, is the processing. The plugin just controls the processing. It's a very, very forward thinking way of working. 88 channels of analog hardware. I can have EQs, compressors, tape. Uh, there's a Bob module in there, which is like bass resonance and Having 88 channels inside a mix of analog processing that is 100% digitally recallable is a dream come true for me. It makes my Avid S4 basically an analog console in the sense that I have channel strips on every channel of the mix controlled using pots on the Avid S4. Now you'll notice that every piece of equipment bar two down here are 100% digitally, digitally recallable. Now, what this means is that I can open any session and all the hardware instantly recalls exactly as it was. So over here, we have the BetterMaker rack, which has the BetterMaker VSP at the bottom, which is a Portex style EQ. Above that, we have the mastering EQ. Then we have the mastering compressor, and at the top, we have the Mastering Limiter V2 version. Now, down at the bottom here, we have a Carnaby HE2. We also have another one over there, which is the Legacy version. So I've got two Carnaby HE2s in here. Um, they're basically, a lot of people call them, they are branded as harmonic EQs, but they're more multiband saturation boxes. Above that, we have the two Wes Audio EQ and Compressor which is the NG Bus Comp and the NG Tube EQ, both 100% digitally recallable. Over this side, we have the Wes Audio Rack. Now in the Wes Audio Rack, we have two Titan Racks that have channel strips in them, EQs and compressors. We've got two Prometheus EQs, two Hyperion EQs, and we have a Rear and a Dion as well. Uh, I also have two Mimus EQs uh, compressors in there. They create four channel strips. You'll notice there is a slot free, and I won't tell you what's going in that just yet, but you'll find out by the end of the month if you watch the YouTube channel. Next, over here, we have a Better Maker Bus Comp. Below that, we have the Hendyamps Michelangelo XL EQ. Now, the XL EQ is one that we designed. It is a Michelangelo EQ on the top with tubes, 
And then at the bottom, we have a Michelangelo MOSFET EQ at the bottom. They run in parallel with each other, some to the bus. And basically, the idea behind it is that we can add saturation and tube EQ as well at the same time. So we can either use it to double up on the amount of EQ that we're using, add saturation in the bottom, and then use the tube EQ as a nice clean EQ, or we can use it to compensate, add saturation, and then compensate for it with the tube EQ. Below that, we have the Hum Audio Lau, the best limiter you will ever hear. It is incredible how good it is. It's a very, very expensive limiter at nearly £9,000, but it is the best limiter you will ever hear, honestly. Um, interfacing down at the back there, we have the Avid MTRX Studio. We then have a Ferrofish Pulse DX. Everything's run over Dante in this room. Um, we then got two Martin Logan amps that power the speakers. And as well, over this side, you can just about see it. We've got two bowl converters for ADDA conversion to the mastering chain. Uh, below that, I have a flock patch bay as well. And yeah, that is the studio. That is Audio Animals Studio B. And it is the dream studio. <laughs>